Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker and Honourable Members of the House, I rise to compliment the voice of the Honourable Members uh, who have spoken before me in commenting the Honourable Minister of Finance and his team for a comprehensive budget. Uh, before I do so, Madam Speaker, I have a few comments uh, as a rebuttal to some of the uh, statements made from the uh, other side of the House. One on, again on peacekeeping, Madam Speaker. Uh, I find it confusing. You would recall that uh, earlier in the year, the Honorable Ngawaka came up with an adjournment motion to review the conditions and, of course, the uh, environment in which our peacekeepers are operating. But on the contrary, uh, just for this budget, uh, they have totally condemned the allocation given for peacekeeping duties. Of course, there are costs and benefits, Madam Speaker, as we all understand. Of course, uh, peacekeeping brings money into the country. And uh, the Shadow Minister for Defence and uh, Foreign Affairs just last week in the weekend's papers was asking on the money owed to the country by the United Nations. And again, it was brought up by the Honourable Nico Nwaikuli yesterday. There are a lot of benefits. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition talked about remittance. Take the military people out of the remittance, the 400 million, how much is left of that? Rural development, you go to the villages in Fiji, homes, a lot of economic projects, people who are coming back with capital, they are not relying on government. Huge benefits, Madam Speaker. So I find it very uh, contradicting uh, the statements uh, made yesterday. Uh, let me also assure uh, the honorable uh, members of the House and of course government that any government is an equal employment opportunity provider. Because it has been raised uh, from the other side that it's bordering on nepotism. They are trying to portray that picture. Madam Speaker, again, let me say, governments, any government is an equal employment opportunity provider. I don't have, my, my family members, my son, they have rights. They don't have to, simply because they are members of my family, it doesn't mean that we deny them the opportunity to be given <laughs> positions of, and vacancies do exist. Uh, it's logical, uh, Madam Speaker. And of course, it's merit-based. Look at the performances of these institutions. Madam Speaker, is, they are trying to portray that there's a lot of nepotism, abuse of power. I've worked in government for the last few years. There's a lot of capacity gap in government, Madam Speaker. We need to have the right people so that they can deliver. I work in agriculture ministry. Unfortunately, retention is one of the biggest issues in the agriculture ministry. We keep losing our people. There's a lot of gap in the agriculture ministry. And it's the same in all ministries, Madam Speaker. If we want people and the ministries to deliver, then we must have the right people in the right job so that they can perform. And that we need to understand. Of course, we want to localize appointments. But of course, we cannot compromise standards. We cannot compromise standards, Madam Speaker. Use your intelligence, please. Most uh, a few from the other side of the House, Madam Speaker, were civil servants. They know the culture in government. They know very well the culture in government. It needs reform, Madam Speaker. We need to have the right people, and of course, we will give them the right uh, uh, remuneration, terms and conditions, but there is work to be done. And that is something that I wish to raise, Madam Speaker. I support the intentions of the budget, both in its audacity to deal with current realities and its endeavor to improve Fiji's overall social and economic landscape. This is shown by the significant investment in agriculture, health, infrastructure, education, housing, water and energy. We welcome the new directions towards these sectors and of course applaud the continuous emphasis on their contributions towards rural development. Madam Speaker, the features of a progressive nation are all captured in the 2016 budget. 
The budget reiterates common belief in the Fijian people and their ability to determine their own destiny. Through making use of the opportunities that are available to them, yes, ordinary Fijians are capable of achieving extraordinary heights. This is the pulse of the 2016 budget. Additionally, Madam Speaker, the total projected expenditure for 2016 of 3.4 billion will be offset from the total projected revenue of 3.1 billion. The minor deficit should not be a cause for alarm. This means, therefore, Madam Speaker, that loans will only be directed to capital investments, which in turn will provide returns not only for the government, but more so for the ordinary Fijians. It should be well noted, Madam Speaker, that the government has been able to alter the capital to operating expenditure mix from a fear of 14 to 80 percent, this was way back before 2007, to a forecast of 40 to 60 percent in 2016. This clearly demonstrates a commitment to investing in the potentials that Fiji has. This, Madam Speaker, are the hallmarks of a good progressive budget, and for that, the Minister for Finance ought to be commended. Madam Speaker, the Honourable Assistant Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development and National Disaster Management has spoken in detail on the programmes on rural development, and it is imperative, therefore, that I do not tell further on this, but list some of the key initiatives in the 2016 budget that will improve and support rural development. These include rural electrification programs, electricity subsidy, rural housing assistance, and rural water assistance, to name a few. On rural housing, Madam Speaker, uh, again, uh, this has been doubled. Uh, from 2015, the allocation was initially uh, one point, uh, uh, sorry, 700,000. In 2015, the allocation was 1.4, and again for 2016, the allocation is again 2016. Uh, Madam Speaker, we are doing two things. We are improving on the livelihoods and the safety and the security of our people, and most importantly, we are investing in disaster risk management. Whenever we build a new house, we are again, saving costs, particularly in the future. If you recall, in Cyclone Thomas, housing alone was about $15 million worth. In Cyclone Evans in 2014, uh, sorry, in 2012, uh, housing costs alone was about uh, $30 million, Madam Speaker. So we are investing in disaster risk reduction as we are putting more into rural housing allocation. Madam Speaker, the Integrated Rural Development Framework was approved by Cameron in 2009, and uh, we, we are working towards, I've got a team dedicated in the ministry to look at the policy and, of course, operationalize the framework. Additionally, Madam Speaker, I will not go into the details. We are reviewing the current programs that we have, simply because we want to consider the changing landscape uh, of the development and the varying needs of the people, and, of course, against uh, the programs that we have, particularly in self-help, rural housing, poverty alleviation, and the non-cane excess roads, because the government allocates 4.4 million to these uh, programs. And we may want to make sure that government gets its dollars worth uh, from the services provided uh, through uh, these various programs. At the same time, Madam Speaker, disaster management, the Act of 1998 needs to be reviewed as consistent with the Sendai framework, and of course the shift uh, from a culture of reaction to one of prevention in our approach to, to disaster management, and this will be the basis for the review uh, of the uh, Disaster uh, Management uh, Act 1998, as, uh, as I've stated, consistent with the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, which has altered the focus of disaster management from managing disasters to managing risks. The provision of $2 million in the 2016 budget for disaster risk reduction and climate change will hasten our progress in this regard and enhance our community's resilience to natural disasters. Madam Speaker, the allocation of $50 million for rural roads that will be administered by the Fiji Road Authority is welcome as it will help improve accessibility for our rural communities both in terms of access to services and access to markets, particularly for our rural farmers. Talking about agriculture investment, Madam Speaker, Previously, the focus was on agriculture productions, but it is time that we look at the whole value chain. And for that, market accessibility is important, and therefore we applaud the allocation given for rural roads, and this will be good news to our farmers. And not only that, but of course, uh, the vessels, the new vessel again, a new vessel in 2016, 
which will be good for the maritime, uh, maritime islands, Madam Speaker. And of course, this is important, particularly for our people that live in the rural areas when it comes to market access. And of course, for the uh, efficient delivery of services to those that need it from the respective government ministries as well. I want to focus on agriculture, Madam Speaker. We will agree that rural and maritime development in the context of most developing countries is synonymous with agriculture. And most of our rural communities are reliant on agriculture for their livelihood. And I want to come up with a bold statement uh, today, Madam Speaker. And this is what I wanted to say to the people of Fiji. If there is a time to be a farmer, it is now. If there is a time for you to be a farmer, it is now. Madam Speaker, agriculture will remain one of the backbones of our economy in terms of supply and the provision of employment to our youths. The result, this needs no further emphasis. The key policy objectives of the Ministry as reflected in the National Agriculture Policy is to ensure positive contribution to the economic development of our country and uh, enhancing rural livelihood. Madam Speaker, the sentiment expressed by His Excellency, the former President of Fiji, while opening Parliament last year, that we are resource-rich but cash poor, will be the catalyst that will drive my ministry to aspire to identify and exploit opportunities available within the agriculture sector for the benefit of all Fijians and, of course, our national economy. Madam Speaker, the increased budgetary provisions in 2016 in the agriculture sector is a strong indication of government's will and commitment to the development of the nation and the very lives of our people and further denotes our economy's reliance on the agriculture sector. Madam Speaker, the 2016 budget for the Ministry of Agriculture has seen an increase in allocation from 64.9 million to 76.2 million, an increase of 17 percent. And this budget will allow the Ministry to carry out its various programs aimed at modernizing and increasing productions in the agriculture sector. Modernization of the agriculture uh, sector, Madam Speaker, is consistent as captured in the 2020 agriculture sector policy agenda. And one of the key focus in 2016 is the coordinated, coordinated approach, particularly to production and, of course, the marketing of the, uh, of the commodities. As I've said, Madam Speaker, if there is a time to be a farmer or an agricultural entrepreneur in Fiji, the time is now. Because the ministry, through the budget allocation for 2016, has got all the, uh, has created the environment uh, for our people. Uh, I thank my brother for the, uh, for the support given because uh, I know that we started off in the Garden of Eden and that is why he's supporting the uh, agriculture. Uh, but I'm worried that uh, the real milk is not uh, recommended uh, for our people today. And I was concerned because the Marama Rokhti was a bit worried because of real milk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Madam Speaker, let, let me just go through some of the programs. And I hope that the farmers are listening. We have a, new, a few new programs, as alluded to by the Minister for Education. We go out to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the farms, to the people, we listen to them, and of course, this has been facilitated as well in the 2016 budget. This also includes the consultations for the uh, next five-year plan and the 20-year plan. Uh, let me focus first on Dalo, Madam Speaker. Dalo was never given any separate allocation in previous years. You would either have Dalo projects from uh, ROY, which is the Rural and Outer Island Program, or the food security program, or export promotion program. These are existing programs, I will not go into the detail. But this year, we have allocated $1 million for that. This is based on our market survey. Previously, Madam Speaker, in terms of agriculture, we were doing a lot of production, but there was sort of a lack of consultation, no relationship between production and demand. Agriculture should be demand driven. We have done agriculture market surveys in uh, the US, in Australia, and of course uh, in uh, New Zealand as well. Uh, we had some uh, uh, surprises from, uh, from the retailers. Uh, in Australia, they, they told us, we don't want to see your face, we want to see your product. Uh, there's a lot of demand from that. 
Unfortunately, Tamiuni, the major Dalo producer in Fiji, has got depleting soil problems. We have to shift Dalo to other areas. We will still maintain Tamiuni and we are working with the other agencies. <laughs> but we will still focus uh, on other areas. Ra, interior of Ra, Naitasiri, Teleu, Rewa, Namosi. Uh, that is the allocation for, oh, sorry, Fondalo is 650,000, Madam Speaker. Yangona was never given any allocation. Yangona is hitting the international market as a relaxation and antidepressant drink, let alone other pharmaceutical purposes. There is going to be an increase in Yangona demand, thus an allocation of $1 million for Yangona farmers. Uh, BQA, BQA uh, farmers uh, in the Singatoko Valley, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, what is BQA? It's a bi uh, bilateral quarantine agreement. Uh, these are farmers that particularly uh, supply eggplants, uh, uh, okra, chilies, and papaya. And uh, they are important to our uh, exporters. We have given a separate allocation for them, a separate allocation of 100,000, which is new. Infrastructure. Previously, Madam Speaker, the allocation for non-cane farm access roads is with the Division of Commissioners. But that is insufficient. Government has now allocated $2 million to the Ministry for Agriculture so that they can handle the new projects, particularly when it comes to need for infrastructure. Agro-Marketing Authority, $5.6 million uh, on their capital budget alone, so that they can buy from Rotuma, they can buy from Koro, they can buy from all over Fiji, where other operators are not accessible. Flatland, uh, Madam Speaker, this is for those in the Central Division. I was in Serea a few weeks ago. Uh, we have a lot of flatland in the Central Division, in Telebu, in Rewa, in Naitasiri, of course in Namosi. But the problem is these lands are idle because we just need watershed management or we need uh, drainage uh, for that purpose. 500,000 has been allocated. Uh, mechanization, 800,000. Just la last Friday, uh, we handed over a new tractor to uh, Lutu village uh, in uh, uh, Lutu Enibuka. Of course, we also handed one to a young farmer, Indo-Fijian farmer in Visama. This is through this farm mechanization allocation. Of course, we are also looking at uh, increasing allocations for cocoa. There's huge demand for cocoa, uh, for cocoa Madam Speaker. And of course, uh, for coconut, an allocation of 500,000. And ginger. Ginger, we have new markets as well, uh, particularly now with ginger puree and ginger juice, additional to what we have been processing previously, thus an allocation of 800,000. In livestock, we have allocation for beef uh, breeding, and we have allocation for beef uh, uh, research as well. Uh, this comes to about uh, 600,000 in total, Madam Speaker. And we want to revive the dormant uh, beef schemes, Ulisebo, uh, Yalabo, and uh, Tilibolebo, uh, to name a few. Ship uh, breeding program, Madam Speaker, we have about uh, uh, 410,000 allocated for the ship multiplication and, of course, for the uh, ship breeding program. Dairy industry support, we have an allocation of uh, 880,000, and, of course, a dairy development program, we subsidize uh, the cooperative, Fiji Cooperative Dairy Limited, we have uh, uh, 500,000 allocated uh, for that. Madam Speaker, this is, uh, has been one of our major problems. And of course, again this year, I thank the Ministry, uh, sorry, the Ministry for Finance for allocating 1.5, uh, 1 million for the brucellosis and uh, uh, tuberculosis uh, eradication campaign. Uh, that we will continue. Unfortunately, some of our farmers have faced losses, but we are looking at ways in which we can improve. And lastly, Madam Speaker, I wish to the um, Honorable uh, Martin Tombu talked about uh, youth. To support youth development, we are also providing 515,000, increasing from 300,000 allocation this year to Nabuso Agricultural School, and of course 614,000, an increase from 500,000 to Tutu Training Center. Tutu is uh, operated by the Catholic Church, and of course, Nabuso by the Methodists, but it does not mean that only Methodists and Catholics uh, qualify into these institutions. Uh, if you meet the, the criteria, you uh, will be uh, accepted uh, into the uh, institute. Madam Speaker, as I've said, this is the right time to be a farmer. 
and I would urge every Fijians, we talk about unemployment in Fiji, there is a lot of employment in the agriculture sector. There is a farmer in Tailevu who plants $15 uh, a week, $200 in a month, $2,400 in a year, at $40 each, $96,000 income in a year, Madam Speaker. That's employment, Madam Speaker. On that note, let me trade my support for the 2016 budget, and I thank you, Madam Speaker, and the more honorable members of the House for your indulgence. Good night. Good night.